and we're live. Over. Yeah, he would be on <laughs> there. Dogecoin. I, what's been going on with Elon Musk and Dogecoin? Did he say something about it on SNL? I saw that like people were discussing right. it, but I don't I watch SNL. It was, it was super high, and then like I know a bunch of people were talking like he's going to go on SNL and it's going to go to the moon, and then he said something about it. I don't know what, and it caused it to go I, down drastically. I'm heavy into Doge. Heavy. Okay, I, I oh. do crypto. And uh, here's my theory on this. Because you got to think about Elon Musk over a, a long narrative arc. So one of the smartest people ever to walk the planet, right? So, and he got me because I, I felt, I fell for the, uh, this impending explosion theory, but I forgot about the, uh, about the old mantra of investment. You know, you, you invest on the rumor, you sell on the fact, right? On the news. And yeah. the rumor you know, going up is flying up. I was in it. I was in early, and then I saw a bounce from sixty to sixty-five to seventy. So I, it's going. So I got caught. I went heavy right before the SNL. Oh and I no. go, So when you say you're heavy I mean, into crypto, you're heavy at sixty-five into crypto. Into Doge, you saying? Into Doge. Doge. Okay, Doge, okay, yeah. okay, okay. But sixty-five cents. Oh, okay, okay. All right, carry on, okay. please. You're thinking of Bitcoin, which is a, a certain type of crypt, uh, cryptocurrency. Yeah, yeah, and it hit 65 First, grand that tricked me up. Here's what, here's what I figured out. To that. Did it on purpose. He had some type of buy. Or, he, he, had, he's, he probably had a sell set up so that when it maxed out on 72, he probably hit a sell button, and then it all crashed. He went back and he bought. It went down to 21 yesterday, and you know he bought in back at 21 with the profits he made. That's yeah. that's how these guys think. That's I, how I saw wait, someone. Wait, 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 This is an evidence-free theory that Elon Musk ran up the price to seventy-two, <laughs> oh, sold totally it all, capture. and then bought this it all is... back at twenty-one, based on him being a genius walking the earth. Well, would, well he owned it, a high enough. Of wouldn't that a genius, genius do that though? Isn't that something? <laughs> if that he had a crystal owns? ball. Well, but I mean, like he he owned enough of it, and like I I don't know enough about crypto or even mm. investing, but I was I was reading about it, and it was like, I mean. <laughs> like, the apparently, old, because, the because they can print Dogecoin, they know who's buying it, or the person who owns it buys it. And someone was like, hey, someone bought $1.5 billion worth of Doge this morning. Who do you think it was? Yeah. <laughs> it's like, a, LeBron James. I don't know. If that's true, it's probably Elon Musk. <laughs> you know, I don't think. Uh, I don't think Anyone you know, I know who does well with, with big zero, a lot of zeros, seven and eight zeros, have the same attitude. I will never buy anything that I do not know who I'm going to sell it to. That is a theory across the board. They investors don't like most of us. Where well, I'm, I'm a, uh, I'm a gambler. I don't know anything. But most guys who do invest for real, they know exactly what's going to happen, and it's not. There's no risk because they, they, they have either controls, and most people I know who have cuckoo cash have inside information. They can kind of keep make. They can lay their bed pretty easily. And that's oh, why it's going to happen with crypto. Uh, there, is, in, there is digital decay, mm -hmm. but with blockchain, there is not. It's a constantly reproducing um, entity inside the digital system. I don't so, know what blockchain is. What does it mean? Oh, jeez. Um, man, it's this long. Basically, what it is, um, <laughs> you, you create this, we'll call it for very simply, you create an entity digitally, all right? And it's re. And it's, re it's kind of cy cycled through the system and it's verified in a million, to million times in a second. Because you have all these nodes that are kind of looking at it. So it has uh, perfect replication because it can't be changed. Because if, like if he starts it and I change it, you're going to know. It, it, it's going to have to match all these nodes at once. So you has, it's called, you create like a, a, a digital footprint that's permanent. It's called minting. I'm, I'm getting to NFTs pretty soon. Uh, I'm studying NFTs in this couple of weeks. Uh, uh, Non-fungible tokens. Um, so basically what that is, you're creating, you're creating a, a big, basically uh, an entity that's digital that has, has a permanent signature that can't ever be changed or modified. Non-fungible, can't change. So it's like a permanent digital record. And you can stamp things. You can, like, you can take a picture and stamp it. And it's a, like an original document that's a rare document because nothing else has that stamp. Only that stamp exists on that particular digital um, file. So those NFTs, I saw something about that. Yeah. I saw people not liking it. Is um, the, the, the catch on it is two things. One, the amount of energy uh, it takes to do the uh, Bitcoin. I mean, all this stuff is very energy intensive. You got people mining it. And you're creating this uh, this 
it takes electricity to make, to run the internet. So you're really overusing the internet and spending a lot of energy to create these tokens. And again, I'm being very, very rudimentary in my explanation yeah. here. But, and a lot of it too is that a lot of it is that people are afraid that it's going to be create uh, um, if somebody gets a hold or is able to, you know, get get some type of uh, encryption capability, like if you use AI or something, quantum physics, quantum computing, that can break into the chain, then somebody can basically control everything that's on this, uh, on this internet, on this, this network, so to speak. So you, you are, but the risk of that's very, very low right now. So we have quantum computing, because that changes the game. Once you have a quantum computer, it changes the game. Because now your computing power has is, is become something else. Given the computer. I have a, a regular PC. <laughs> <laughs> Can it I was play gonna crisis? Say a, I was going to say like the name of a simple like part, and I realized I don't know any of the names of the parts. <laughs> I, I have an NVIDIA for the graphic. <laughs> I think there's only two quantum computers in existence. Uh, Google has one, and I think it's the 53 Quibit. Um, and that's, that's a pretty powerful machine. Put it this way. It would take um, it would take the best computer in the world like ten thousand years to do a certain computation. Mm -hmm. uh, Google's computer can do it in like maybe two hours. So you have a, the, the world's best supercomputer would take like you know to do it. This, this is a massive equation. This is for you know understanding the the relationship of of, of uh, electrons and neutrons in the universe. Right? It's, it's this massive amount of data. A quantum computer can do it in about two hours, where the, the world's greatest supercomputer takes about, I, well, they said it was the 10,000 years, and they said, no, no, it would only take us three days, but still, you know, two hours, two minutes to three days is still a huge, huge gap in capability. Definitely. Yeah, yeah I don't know, I don't know anything uh, about that. 